What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you had a good week. Today we're going to be continuing our series on the New Apostolic Reformation. So let's delve in. Hello everyone. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Alan. Before I begin, I just want to state that the news details in this video are courtesy of the Christian Post, and the analysis is courtesy of Pastor Cameron and Jeremiah Johnson. Jeremiah Johnson made his way into the mountains. No, not him. One of the most horrific and dangerous false teachers associated with the New Apostolic Reformation is Todd Bentley. A clear example of the complete lack of discernment which exists in the NAR was the conferral of Todd Bentley by Bill Johnson and others. Key figures in the New Apostolic Reformation would have us believe that they possess the most direct line of communication with God. But Todd Bentley is a case study, which certainly puts this assertion into question. Bentley rose to the forefront during a series of charismatic gatherings, which came to be known as the Lakeland Revivals. Although he was originally scheduled to speak for only a few days at the event, Mr. Bentley ended up remaining for several months. The Lakeland revivals were rampant with strange behaviors including holy laughter and bizarre physical manifestations. Perhaps the most distinctive and frankly dangerous characteristic of Todd Bentley's alleged spiritual gifts are his claims about healing people of diseases by punching and kicking them. And one of his infamous signatures is saying BAM over and over again. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you know, restoration, Rick's here, my first service, uh, you know, God, you want me to punch this guy? And I, it just didn't make sense to me. And I thought, Lord, he's dying. You know, he, he yeah. lost over 40 pounds. So anyways, I punched him in that broken sternum and he ended up on the ground and just vibrating under the power of God. He gets up and immediately you could see a change in his face and his yeah. countenance. And uh, long story short, he was totally healed of cancer. Lakeland generated a lot of attention from Christian media and a lot of criticism from conservative evangelicals, both in the cessationist and continuationist camps. The claims about miracles were quite jolting. Supposedly, dozens of people had been raised from the dead. And for a little while, at least, it did appear that Todd Bentley had become the new face of the New Apostolic Reformation. But as time went on, things began to fall apart pretty quickly. Before we examine Bentley's alleged healings, let's first take a look at some troubling aspects about his theology. Mr. Bentley is known for talking about hyper-frenzy accounts in relation to the Spirit's work in his life. In this one, he claims that after his conversion, he was possessed by demons. And as I'm sitting there, I hear the audible voice of the Lord, and here's what God says to me. He says, Todd, go up to Frenchie and tell him that you have a demon. I said, what? In this same talk, Mr. Bentley goes on to state that a spirit took control of his voice. Tell him I have a demon. I said, how can I have a demon? Yeah, I don't have a demon. And so he said, yeah, I want you to go tell him that you have a demon. And so right in the middle of this service, I walk up to him and I, I, I whisper into his ears, Frenchie, I have a, and I start manifesting a demon. In fact, it wasn't my voice anymore. I was so possessed by this spirit that literally my voice started speaking in another voice. Later, he points out that the exact number of demons who took possession of him was 25. Now, that was troubling and disturbing. That is not simply error. That is, in fact, heresy. It is a direct contradiction of sacred scripture, which asserts that a true believer cannot be indwelt by both the Holy Spirit and a demonic presence at the same time. In Matthew 12, 43 through 45, Jesus says, Now when the unclean spirit comes out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they come in and live there. And the last condition of that person becomes worse than the first. That is the way it will also be with this evil generation. Notice that Jesus describes those who are demonically possessed as being an evil generation. Notice also that our Lord asserts that the body of this individual who becomes possessed by evil spirits is unoccupied. There is not a single example in the entire Bible 
about a true believer who is possessed by a demon. And in all of the texts in the New Testament, which discuss the subject of spiritual warfare, there are never instructions given to cast out a demon in a believer. Additionally, Todd Bentley has told his followers that God has instructed him to stress the supernatural over Jesus. Here's a quote. You know, I told the Lord, why can't I just move in healing and forget talking about all that other stuff? He said, because Todd, you got to get the people to believe in the angel. I said, God, why do I want people to believe in the angel? Isn't it about getting the people to believe in Jesus? He said the people already believe in Jesus, but the church doesn't believe in the supernatural. The church has no problem believing in Jesus, but what we don't believe in is the supernatural. So according to Mr. Bentley, God doesn't want him to do more preaching about justification by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. Instead, he wants him to focus on the supernatural over that. Compare his faulty theology with Paul, who in 2 Corinthians 12, 2 through 6, refused to talk about his own supernatural experiences. And in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, where he made Christ the singular focus of his ministry. It should come as little surprise that there was virtually no preaching of the word at Lakeland. Mr. Bentley's presentations primarily consisted about teachings about his own experiences. And in relation to the alleged healings, World Magazine, which is a conservative Christian media outlet, discovered that 12 of the individuals who were supposedly healed of their ailments had in fact died. Name, and Jesus will look at them and he said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. This man is a worker of iniquity. Which man? You. Interestingly enough, before the revivals even ended, Bentley resigned. He later divorced his wife and remarried a female intern. Afterwards, Bentley was allowed to return to teaching after being examined and exonerated by a few fellow NAR leaders. In more recent news, an extensive investigation into Todd Bentley's past behavior found that since 2004, Mr. Bentley had engaged in a multiplicity of immoral sins over the years. In summation, Todd Bentley is without question one of the absolute worst false teachers associated with the New Apostolic Reformation. His heretical theology, along with his dangerous behavior, make him an individual which true Bible-believing Christians need to steer far away from. We should pray for those who have suffered under Bentley's teaching and hope that the Spirit of God will work in their hearts so that they will embrace the true Jesus as he is freely offered in the gospel. Ladies and gents, if you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I've posted links below. Have an awesome week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.